cutting steel on a CNC router. Welcome to episode 10 of CNC Router Beginner to Pro. Now, cutting steel means that we have a fairly narrow window of cutting parameters that will actually work. So today I like to show you the cutting parameters that I have established and I will also give you some tips like always. So after filming the video, there is really one main takeaway that I want to inject right here in the beginning before you write a comment of I'm doing everything wrong. And that is that the router or the CNC router has a problem in regards to horsepower and RPM. It just doesn't have torque at a low RPM. So horsepower and required horsepower is directly related to the diameter of the tool and the depth of the cut. It is nice uh, that you make an uh, adaptive strategy by using maybe just 10% as optimal cut in fusion and then go the entire flute length. However, that means that you have to up the RPM. That is not the strategy I, I do. My strategy is to use a low depth of cut with a higher feed rate and then I can drop down the RPM. So in some of the cuts today, I dropped it all the way down to 11,000 RPM and that means that the chips came off straw colored. So if there's one takeaway of this video today, that is that you don't want too high of a surface, feed, a surface speed, um, drop the RPM down or try to do that. There are many uh, videos on YouTube where sparks are flying and I will try not to do that when I cut steel. So the first thing I like to share is that there is some safety aspect of working with steel on the router because the ships are going to be really, really small and they're going to fly everywhere. So see that you can somehow enhouse your router, even if it's temporary, using just a piece of cardboard. And next is that you see me wearing this apron. I have that already since a long time, not just for this job. Um, however, the chips, uh, because of the high surface feed, surface speed actually that we have um, going to come off really hot they are usually blue and if you wear a synthetic shirt like I do they're going to melt right into that so uh, be ready uh, to throw the clothes away or wear something old next is you are going to need some safety glasses I guarantee you this is steel so if it gets in your eye it will rust very quickly because of the uh, salt that is in your in your eye and uh, you're going to end up at the eye doctor. So all of those things, just have them ready and be prepared when you cut steel. Next, you have to make a decision if you want to cut dry or use a fog buster. So I do use my JB Works Mist Cooler or Cool Mister and I use a metal cutting fluid. And I told you this one here for aluminum is pretty good, but for steel, um, I like it because of its lubricity. I also like it because there is no uh, big environmental concern with it, so you, it's not hazardous waste, you just can dispose of it once you're finished with it. So this is Trim Microsol 585XT. You uh, can get this on Amazon. Now, I also like to tell you that I do not use it when I cut uh, any deeper holes, let's say a 10 millimeter hole, two times the diameter of the tool, I don't use it. The cutting fluid actually will cause the chips to cling on the sidewalls and then you rechew all of that and I don't like so that. So next, let's talk about the tool. We have talked about speeds and feeds for aluminum and all the lingos that we need for that. So by now you know that the surface speed is a given parameter and that's not different for steel. And using a router that is really difficult to get into the range of surface feed, uh, speed excuse me, that we need because we have this high RPM or in other words at lower RPM we do not have the torque needed to cut through steel. So the horsepower is directly related to the diameter of the tool. So choose a small tool. So the end mill I like for cutting steel is a quarter inch in diameter. It's a four flute. It's made by Online Carbide, and I'm going to leave you a link. I have no affiliation with them, but I have multiple tools from them, and I like them. They have lasted a good while, and so I'm happy with the results that I get. You know by now everything about speeds and feeds. If you don't look at episode 8, I have more explanation for that. The next one is it has a coating on it, and it's a titanium aluminum nitride coating. I yeah, titanium aluminum nitride coating, but it also has an edge radius. So I like that edge radius because it just keeps the tool sharper, longer, 
and um, that that tiny tiny edge hanging out there's nothing behind it and it's usually what wears out first so by making a radius right there um, the bottom of the pocket will have a smaller radius I don't mind that I can take that into account in my design but the tool life is much longer the next reason I like this tool is that it has a variable helix so the pitch of the flute is not the same and that avoids vibration all of that uh, are positives in my book and the price is good as well so that's why I use normally this quarter inch tool the RPM that I had established in prior cuts is 13,000 and I think I like to further drop that if that's possible at least in the facing operation because I take always such a shallow depth of cut and I will see if I can do that today um, so pay attention to that and for the feed direction I like climb cutting this just has to do with where the chip uh, ends up uh, where it is ejected actually behind the tool normally but however in cutting steel on your machine also try the conventional cutting it um, will help you if there's backlash or if the machine is not quite as stiff in the holding power then you will also hear it on my machine actually um, the um, conventional cut sounds better the climb cutting it's sometimes the uh, endman is not quite as happy so instead of just making some cuts and show you the results i rather make a project um, in my vice build i have the fixed top plate made from aluminum and I like to replace it with a steel one so that is uh, today's project uh, I'm not going to go all through that or we are not going to finish it but um, I like to show you this is A36 mild steel hot rolled and the specific about this is that it has this black surface right here and that is from the hot roll process it does like to eat carbide for breakfast so when you make a cut into that surface make sure that um, you have enough depth of cut just don't coast along the top of it um, that will just um, ruin your end mill in a hurry so make a depth of cut go at least 0.3 millimeter deep in with the first cut so that you are below that um, scale actually that is on the top surface you can get this material at least in germany also free of scale but my vendor here in the United States does not have that. For machining steel, it's an advantage to set up a vise on your machine. Uh, the vise brings added mass and it dampens the vibration. Here I see, um, have put two pins in the table because I have locating pins. Um, that makes it nice because I don't have to fuss around and align the jaw, the fixed jaw. Um, the Z0 is going to be the bottom of the vise. This way I have my coordinate system set up right there and when I flip the part for the second operation I don't have to reset uh, Z0 it's gonna remain right there okay so let's clamp it and make the first pass So with the same depth of cut but the higher step over I like to show you that the color of the chip has actually changed from straw colored to let me focus here it is has changed from straw colored all the way to a very very dark blue so I don't like this so good um, already for the fact that it also when it lands somewhere like on plastic or my clothes actually it melts into it
Okay, the final image from the bore was uh, no finishing pass yet. That was still the 2D adaptive pass, so I think the surface finish is going to get better. And overall, I think on the parts, the surface finish came out really good. The sweet spot, spot for the RPM, I can say, is between 12 and 13,000 RPM. 10,000 is too low. I think that is where um, you possibly could stall the spindle. Um, the step down, um, I took a shallow cut. At one point of time, there was 1.5 millimeter depth of cut and a small step over. I think I like the strategy of about 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter uh, in axial direction and then a step over in radial direction of about, let's say, 3 to 5 millimeter on a quarter inch tool. That produced, I think, uh, a, a good chip. Uh, it looked good, the surface looked good, the bit was happy, and the feed rate, I could dial it up all the way to 2.5 meters per minute. I think that is actually pretty decent. Overall, I think I was able to demonstrate to you that it is totally possible to machine mild steel on a CNC router with a 2 kilowatt spindle uh, without breaking a tool or without um, sparks flying everywhere. All right, okay, so this was episode 10 today. Um, please leave me a like if you find um, this video also had some value in it for you. And uh, this will wrap up actually this complete series, Beginner to Pro. I hope that I could get you a level of knowledge up going through this series and maybe you can now start with more confidence one or the other project on your router. Okay, take care and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.